the movement that means you become part of the machine. It's a living thing with you riding. It gives you a great sense of freedom, of independence. It just makes you feel so alive when you are riding a motorcycle. My name is Talon Skills Piggins. I race a motorcycle with Club Thunder Sport. The only difference between me and anybody else out there is that I'm paralysed from the chest down. But when I'm riding, I completely forget about my disability. I just feel like any other rider, any other racer, and I love being on a motorbike. We go back to the, the very distant past. I was a Royal Naval Officer. Then I left the Royal Navy, uh, travelled around Australia, went to London to seek my fortune, couldn't find it, and then became a PE teacher. But it was only six months into my first job as a PE teacher that I was uh, knocked off my motorcycle. Car clipped me from the side. I went onto the other side of the road and I went straight into the path of the oncoming traffic. The car coming towards me didn't have time to take any avoiding action, went straight over the top of me. Uh, it shattered two bones in my back at T4, T5, uh, and that paralyzed me from the chest down. So basically nipple level down. I can't move, can't feel. Another millimeter of movement and I would be paralyzed from the neck down. So I always, I always think I'm very fortunate because I've got the use of my arms. Uh, I finally came out the back of the car only to see another one. I was like, oh no, I'm gonna get over twice, how unlucky. Uh, but fortunately that car stopped. Um, and uh, the bloke came out of his car and said those immortal words of, are you all right, mate? <laughs> and I'm like looking at him thinking, I've just been run over by a car. How blatantly I am not all right. And that's how my life changed in an instant. My consultant uh, told me that I was paralyzed from the chest down. I was never gonna walk again. Uh, I had a 30% chance of survival and that I would be in hospital for anything up to two years due to the severity of the injuries. And my first thought was simply switch off all the life support. There, there's, no, there's no way that I will cope being paralysed. You know, my life was about physical activity, about being out there doing stuff. From individual sports to team sports, I, you know, I loved it all. Uh, I couldn't see any happiness, any joy, any reason to continue. After the frustration, the hopelessness, the hopelessness turned into anger uh, and hatred, uh, hating the world, hating everybody that could walk uh, because they could do that simple action of standing around and walking and all those things that I wasn't going to be able to do. So I got over that, I don't hate the world. I was very fortunate in hospital that a guy who had been paralyzed, say four years before, he came in for his regular checkup. He came over and he said, look, you know, being in a wheelchair is it's really tough. It, you know, it's going to be hard, but there are lots of opportunities out there. And, and he told me, that, you know, that he had a girlfriend, that he drove his car. And then he told me that he had been skiing. But he told me there was this thing where you sat in a fiberglass seat on a metal frame with a single ski underneath you and these little baby crutches in your hands. And they had little baby skis on them and you could go out there and go down the mountain. For that, for that, that was the moment that changed everything. Suddenly there was hope. And that hope then became sort of a purpose. I decided that I would learn to ski, uh, that I would try and get into the British team and go to the Paralympics. 12 days after my accident, that, was my, that became my goal. There is that mechanism inside each and every person to overcome any trauma that happens to them. Uh, there is an incredible reserve of strength and resilience inside each and every person. I thought, well, if I can go skiing, maybe I can get back on a motorbike. Instead of starting off small, I went into the showroom and did the, hmm, what's the biggest, shiniest motorbike I can possibly get? That one. I'll buy myself a, a GSX-R 1000 K6. Tried all these different ways of adapting it and then finally on my very first outing I went to a disused airfield in Cornwall. It lasted five minutes before I fell off, but those five minutes changed everything. It, it was incredible to be back on a motorbike. We developed a way of launching and catching uh, the motorcycle. And obviously, once I'm riding, I'm balanced. But getting to that point and 
coming back from that point to stationary is the tricky bit. Uh, when I'm ready, I get taken off this paddock stand, start the bike up, put it in first gear. The person that stood at the front moves to one side and then I simply drive out of their hands. Go off, do my track time, come back, and the same people that launched me are there to catch me. With the bike, um, you can take a box standard motorcycle. Uh, first thing you've got to think about is feet. We have an old set of steel bicycle toe clips. Uh, they get attached onto the toe clips with a, a slight extension bar, an L-shaped extension bar. Then we put Velcro on the toe clip and Velcro on the bottom of the boot. The knee, well, we take the knee slider off of the leathers and then we attach a strap to the side of the bike with a little sort of tail. That wraps around the knee onto where the knee slider is. Um, you've got to be careful that you don't put too much Velcro on because you want to come away from the bike should you and the bike you know, slide down the road. To change gears, you use an electronic gear shifter. It's a big unit that sits over the top of the, uh, the foot operated gear lever. Uh, and then on the handlebars is a red or green button and you simply press the buttons in order to go up and down through the gearbox. And effectively that's all you need. But on race bikes you need to have two operational brakes to go through scrutineering. So on the right hand side of the motorcycle I have a twin braking system. So two levers, one above the other. The top one operates the front brake, the bottom one operates the rear brake. To the casual observer you don't look any different from anybody else out there. Since I have been paralysed, uh, I have crashed twice. Um, once was a low slide. The second time was last year in August. Uh, had a mechanical failure whilst going into turn one at Assen. The bike then high-sided, and unfortunately we were using a different system to hold me onto the bike. The bike somersaulted down the road uh, with me strapped to it. And that resulted in me splitting my pelvis, shattering my femur, splitting the knee plateau on the left leg, shattering the fib tip and breaking every bone in my left foot. That wasn't so good. Uh, they waited for me to wake up and then they told me they were going to amputate my left leg because they couldn't create a walkable ankle joint. And I said, well, that's all right, it doesn't matter to me. And I said, well, well, they said, yes, well, you know, in time when you heal, you'll be able to walk again. And, but with that ankle, we, we can't do it. We would have to fix it. So it's better for you to wear a prosthetic. I said, yeah, but I, I don't walk. And they said, well, yes, but not now. And I said, no, 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 you, I, I'm paralyzed. And then they started freaking out that they'd been worried about my legs when they should be worried about my back. And they go, oh my God, quick, immobilize. And then, then I had to try and calm them down and explain that I was paralyzed before I got on the motorbike. Uh, and then they, there was lots of head scratching and they couldn't understand that I'd just come from the Assen motorcycle racing, yet I was paralyzed. So that all finally came out in a wash and then they decided to let me keep my leg. None of the other racers treat me any different whilst we're out on the circuit. They will take my apexes if I leave them a gap. They will hit me if uh, you know, I'm in the way. To be out there banging fairings with everybody else is possibly the best feeling. And the first time I got hit, I was overjoyed because I knew that it meant that they weren't gonna treat me uh, with, with kid gloves. They were treating me just as another racer. And that is what I have fought to be treated as just another racer. I believe that everybody can do it. I haven't done anything special. I don't have any magical ingredients that other people don't have. Whilst I was in hospital, I had the opportunity to have a very honest conversation with a little person that lives inside me. And I feel that that person uh, inside everybody has the power to achieve any goal that you set yourself. And you can be your greatest source of inspiration. You don't need to look to anybody else. You just need to look to the person that's inside you because they will help you achieve absolutely anything. There are, you know, there are times when you feel motivated, then there are times when you feel inspired and those feelings come and they go. What you need to have is that constant commitment uh, to, to reach the goals that you have set yourself. Uh, and that commitment will come from the person that lives inside you. And everybody has that person, you just have to, to find it. Yeah? To be honest with yourself about what it is you really want. And when, you're, when you become that honest with yourself, you can realise that actually there's nothing that you can't achieve.